We have a Nissan Titan here with uh, air conditioning that's not blowing cold. So although this is a Nissan Titan, uh, it's the exact same process for uh, any of our air conditioning uh, issues that we might have. So uh, follow along, let's uh, figure out why this thing's uh, not keeping our customer cold. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to confirm that it's not blowing cold. Uh, I've got the engine running. It's about, oh, I don't know, probably 78, 80 degrees outside or inside here. So it's not too bad, not too uncomfortable. And you can see my infrared gun is showing it's cooled down to about 67 degrees. So it's probably taking about 10 degrees out of the air should be cooler than that but it's not bad I don't know how it gets once it gets out in the Sun and gets hot but uh, that's not too bad let's uh let's measure the uh, air conditioning uh, refrigerant level So when you look at the machine here, engine's not running. We've got 65 PSI on the low side and about 175 on the high side. Those numbers should be even with the engine off. They should equalize. So we got a problem in a valve or a compressor, something that's uh, locking the two sides off. 200 on the high side, 30 on the low, those are good numbers. What happens though is when we shut it off, they don't equalize and they should equalize at about probably 60 or 70 PSI and that's not happening. Okay, I shut the engine off and if you look, our numbers, our gauges aren't changing. We still have 200 PSI here and we, we're up to about 55 on the low side. But those things should, those numbers should come together. So something is holding the high side high and the low side low. Uh, typically what you're gonna find there is a compressor that won't, uh, has a valve stuck in it. So I'm going to uh, evacuate the system, figure out how much refrigerant's still in there, make sure our problem isn't that it's, it's, it's low as to why our charging isn't uh, prop, uh, proper temperature. But uh, I'll recover it. We'll figure out how much is in there and we'll go from there. So with the system evacuated, I took out 1.46 pounds. Uh, when it was serviced last, we put in 1.56 pounds. So we lost a tenth of a pound over that period. Uh, when we service air conditioning systems, we always add a dye before we send it out again, just so that we can find future leaks. And uh, I've looked over the entire external system and I find no uh, indication of any dye. Maybe just a slight residue uh, of something around the compressor, um, but there's so much uh, oxidation on the compressor that might be what's setting off that dye or that uh, the, uh, UV light. So the next thing to do uh, is to, uh, with the system evacuated, there's no pressure in the system, there's no refrigerant in the system. What we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the machine and put in a, uh, a CO2 charge into the system at about 80 pounds. And then we use a CO2 detector to see if we can find a leak at the uh, evaporator. What will happen is it will charge the whole system up with pressure of CO2. And if the CO2 leaks out in the evaporator inside the car, uh, it will set off our indicator. And that will let us know that our small leak is at the evaporator. Uh, those typically will develop a very small leak, something that might take a year or two to, to uh, actually uh, uh, lose enough refrigerant that it, it uh, affects the temperature of the output. Uh, but the next thing you do is to add some CO2 to it. We'll do the, indi uh, the CO2 uh, uh, indicator and then we'll, we'll uh, see if that's leaking. 
Uh, we still need to figure out why our pressures are not equalizing though. So we got a couple problems on this. So let's get on to it. All right, so here's our CO2, compressed CO2. I've got it set at about probably 70 PSI. Hose is going into the high side of the system. So the system was empty, uh, totally evacuated. Uh, so the only thing that's in there is CO2. And I'll just let it sit there and, and uh, uh, fill the system up. Uh, anything that leaks out will be, uh, will be able to, will be able to find with our CO2 indicator. Um, I will uh, let it sit here for a minute and then I'll take you inside and we'll see if we can't see any leaks at the evaporator. So this is our uh, CO2 indicator. Uh, I've got it on set on high sensitivity. Uh, so the system has just been sitting there with CO2 pressurized on it. So if there's a leak in the evaporator, I can put this thing up to the vents here and it should indicate uh, that there is a, a leak there. And it'll, you'll see these lights go off right here and it'll make all kinds of noise. So I've got it sitting here. I had it here for about 10 minutes. I don't see anything. Uh, I'm going to turn the fan on to blow up anything that's collected in that uh, evaporator box and see if maybe it, uh, it has something sitting down there. So let me turn the fan on for a sec. So I don't see anything, any indication that the evaporator has got a leak in it. Uh, and just to indicate how, or to show you how, the, uh, how sensitive this machine is, if I take this thing and I just breathe across it, so one quick breath sets that thing off like crazy. So. Uh, I'm sus suspecting that there is no leak in the con in the evaporator, which is good because it's a huge job, and I doubt the customer wants to take care of that. So, uh, evaporator is not our leak. There is a trace of dye on the compressor, so I'm suspecting that our compressor might be leaking at the case halves, um, and I suspect that's our problem with the uh, system not uh, equalizing like it should. So uh, let's go after that part. So while I was still had the CO2 hooked up. I crawled underneath with our uh, CO, CO2 indicator and uh, uh, ran it across the compressor and I got some good hits. So I'm going to put the thing up in the air so I can take you with me uh, and I'll show you where I, uh, where I see that uh, uh, CO2 leaking out and then I think I can show you where the uh, dye is also showing. <laughs> All right, so I got you underneath here. You can see the compressor, right? This is the compressor, and I've got my indicator, CO2 monitor. You can see it just setting off up down here. So let me clear it. If I put it up here, back here, you can hear it beeping. And there, you can see the indicators right there. Let me change the sensitivity a little bit and see if I can't get something even stronger. Yeah, it's even setting off on medium. You can see that. So what I see is it's leaking at the case halves up here, uh, in, between, in between the back half and the front half. So I'm going to recharge the system with uh, its normal charge, 1.56 uh, pounds of refrigerant. And uh, I want to see if maybe evacuating it and putting it back in uh, may have uh, affected our ability to uh, uh, equalize our pressures. Okay, it's charging now. Not sure if you can read it, but it's got about eight tenths of a pound in it. I'm putting in 1.56. That's a full charge. See how they're equalized? We've got a, just under 100 here, and we've got a little over 80 here. That's essentially equalized. So what we need to do is fully charge it, and then uh, run it 
and see if when you shut it back off those pressures come back to, to equal. So with the engine running here, I got it just over, off, just off of idle. Uh, you can see that the high side is way high, 280 probably, and the low side is too low. Uh, that tells us our compressor is doing its job. It does have a leak, but it's doing its job. But that expansion valve has to be restricted. And that also would cause our problem with the equalization problem. So we had two problems with that uh, Titan. Uh, we had a uh, AC compressor leaking. Uh, it was doing its job, but it was leaking. And we had a uh, expansion valve that is restricted. Uh, it's not allowing uh, uh, the full pressure through it, and it's creating a, a low pressure uh, on the other side of it. So what we're going to sell them is uh, a compressor. Uh, and a uh, expansion valve. That expansion valve is a big job because it uh, you have to take the dash apart to get it out. Uh, so uh, customer is going to decide if that's what he wants to do, uh, and then we will uh, take care of him.